Okay, this morning we've been out on the harbour and we've got a feed of gurnard, so um, we just kept enough for a couple of feeds, which was pretty good. I thought I'd take you through how I fill up the gurnard. Um, you'll notice I've got a couple of gloves on today. So one is uh, quite a heavy duty one because gurnard have lots of little spines on them. Um, you can see in here a nice little spine. Okay, beautiful wings for those that haven't seen these before. Just beautiful iridescent blue. And so the sunlight catches that just amazing. Beautiful fish, not only to look at but to taste as well. And they crawl along the bottom with these little, um, I guess what were leftover legs. So you can see how they would crawl across the bottom like that. But uh, beautiful eating fish, but they do have lots of spikes on them. So you've got a good spike here and a few more along here. So hence why this quite heavy duty glove and then a rubber glove on the other, or just a, another glove on the other hand uh, because they are very, very slippery. So as always, make sure your knife is nice and sharp. Okay, so gurnard are pretty simple. So basically you're gonna fold the knife in under that fin, that spike that's there, and then down, straight down to the backbone and across like that. So, cut down, and then just, it's all about um, knife angle, going along the backbone, and you get one nice fillet off like that. And you can see that we're very nice and close to the backbone there. You can flip the fish over. And the same on the other side. Again, so you've got a nice clean backbone. So then you lift with a fillet like this. You can leave the skin on. There's not really any major scales on here. Um, you can pan fry that and make it nice and crispy, which is very, very nice. Uh, or you can fillet it. Um, take the skin off it. So again, all about knife angle. Holding that tight, just work that through. And then you're left with a beautiful fillet. Okay, there is another way you can fill up these where you actually keep that skin intact. Now the reason I don't is um, because the dogs like to eat this. So, But what it is is basically the same cut as previously. Along the backbone, you just don't take the knife all the way to the end. Fold the fish over. Clean that bit of gut out of the fillet there. But then you can see you've left with the skin actually intact. Now if you were going to burly that or whatever, um, yeah. But, because we've got a couple of beautiful border collies here. Good girl, good boy. You want one girl? Good girl, Lou. Here. Good girl. Happy border collies. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Always good to do an autopsy on what you've been catching and have a look what they've been eating. So, uh, as you saw, I've been filleting some gurnard. So, there's a little bit of my burley in there. Beautiful little crab that that gurnard's been eating. So, hence why my bait sizes match the hatch with the catch. So, uh, what's this guy got on them? Sorry for those that don't like the blood and guts of stuff, but very important part of fishing. He's actually got a fairly empty stomach, that one, so he hasn't been eating much. What else have we got here? Here's one that's had a feed of something. So another really good example. So um, some crabs, a bit more of my burley. You can actually see um, the bit of sprat um, so I use catch my own bait and that's a bit of sprat that he's caught, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six little crabs in there. I mean, look at that, beautiful. Oh, this looks like a, what's he got in here? Oh, this is a good sized crab, this one. So look at that, that's a good sized crab, paddle crab that this guy's eaten. So the baits that I use for when we're fishing for uh, gurnard are no bigger than that actually. And the reason is, is because that's what the size they're used to eating. So really good example there. Good boy Mac. Yeah, gurnard skins and Lou. Mac out. Good girl Lou. Gently, good girl. Mac, sit. Mac, sit. Good boy, wait. 
gently. Good boy. Good girl, Luke, gently. Good girl.